welcome to Sports Den on location. You'll recognize the logo in the middle of the field. That's the Centennial Cougars logo. We are live from Cougar Stadium at Centennial High School. This is Sports Den. I am Kenton Kipp, and I am joined by my close personal friends, Matt Bishop <laughs> and Megan Knight. How are you doing, kids? Great. Good. Doing well, man. Beautiful day. It's y a beautiful you day. You picked a good one to have it on location. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, a home game for Centennial. It's the first time we've been here all year for football. Yeah. Was a we actually we showed up for the day. first time at the stadium last night mm -hmm. for section final soccer. And now we're here again for some football and, of course, sports death. Yeah, we actually slept here. I had a cot up in the press box. I didn't yes. leave at no. all. Yeah, nice nice little uh, lean-to you made up there. It was very nice. <laughs> and uh, so we've been following Centennial on the road this year. And uh, they were on the road this past Friday night in one of our uh, big-time rivalry matchups with the Blaine Bengals. Yeah, we got a little two for one. I didn't know. you. We were going to do a bet with you guys. Yeah, we did. Um, we did. We settled you it did. today. The bet was I had to buy Megan Caribou if Centennial won. She would have to buy me something of my choice if Blaine won. And as we'll see in the highlights uh, shortly, I had to open up the wallet Oh, today. you're going to get a real-life caribou. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't specify. You said buy your caribou. Yeah, we didn't specify animal or the hot beverage. Alpaca, maybe. <laughs> uh, caribou would be nice. That's true. Should we get into some highlights? Let's do Play this. Oh, I see. It was a crazy one. It was, it was a game that was uh, encompassing a wide range of emotions for both of these teams as they were both coming in pretty hot. Blaine trying to rebound from a 50 to nothing loss, but Centennial was trying to win their second straight game. It was senior night for the Bengals at Bengals Stadium. You see Joey Blommer there, one of the seniors on this team. A lot of Logan seniors. Nelson, another one. We'll pick things up in the first quarter. Ben Beckman started this game off very well. He was on fire, moving the ball at ease. He hits Grant Bogey for a 55-yard completion. Gives Blaine great field position later in the drive. About a minute later, Bengals have five wide receivers. Beckman patient in the pocket, and he finds Blommer in the back corner of the end zone. Just hauls it in, keeps his feet in bounds, and Blaine gets the early lead. Take another look at it. Sticks that big left paw out there. That's a nominee. And that is a top play nominee. Ensuing kickoff for the Bengals. It's returned by Riley Treadle for the Cougars. Riley Treadle makes a couple of guys miss, splits up the middle, and Beckman, who had just thrown the touchdown pass, slows him up just enough to help his teammates, but with the good field position for Centennial, it sets up this. Ryan Meany on the move over to Keyshawn Story, almost reminiscent of the Blaine touchdown. Story just gets that left foot in bounds before he goes out of bounds. The first touchdown for Story. So Blaine still up by one after the extra point failed. Grant Fussy in, shovel pass. Nick Studer goes 30 yards to the house, gives Blaine the 14 to six lead after the extra point was good. And then Blaine once again on the doorstep here, the first play of the second quarter, it's Nate Crodel gets his first touchdown of the year as he bowls forward 20 to six at that point. Meany goes back to the air for Centennial, finds Levi Falk, a beautiful over the shoulder catch. He's brought down just before the goal line and that 40 plus yard completion will lead to this. Tyler Iquinto, he found the end zone plenty in this game. He bowls through the line and scores with about four minutes left in the quarter. Blaine would punt with 20 seconds left. It would be blocked by Logan Davey, recovered at the 10 yard line with just mere moments remaining in the half. Five seconds left, Meany rolls to his right and this is the easiest catch of Levi Falk's career. Falk finds some room in the end zone, gets the touchdown. He hauls in the touchdown grab for Meany. After a Kale Gieske field goal, Centennial takes the lead 21-20. Here in the third quarter, it would be a long pass to Keyshawn Story. Ryan Meany, 189 yards passing in the game, and then just the first play of the fourth, Tyler Iquinto with the second touchdown run. This is when Beckman would start to get a bit iffy back at the quarterback position for the Bengals. Throws an interception here, and that Blaine interception would lead to this. A four-yard touchdown run for Tyler Iquinto. He had 28 carries, 141 yards, and three touchdowns in this football game for the Centennial Cougars. 
It wasn't just Ty Quinto, though. Here's Carl Schofoster. Schofoster, the fullback, goes through the middle. One of his four carries for 37 yards and the touchdown. At that point, 42 to 20 Centennial. They were down 20 to six in this game. Grant Bogey and Ben Beckman will connect again. Bogey, a beautiful effort after the catch. He had six catches for 109, or nine catches for 195 yards and this touchdown. At that point, 42 to 26. Centennial still led. The conversion would fail, and then Tyler Iquinto, he didn't just run for touchdowns, folks. He is able to do it on special teams. He does not get touched on this 85-yard kickoff return. Beats Beckman, the kicker, the last one who maybe had a chance at him, to the house. The Nominated. The, the extra point would be good as that is the top play nominee, 49-26. And just for good measure, the defense wants to get a touchdown. Pick six, Danny Anderson takes it down the left sideline and it will be another seven points, just like his number for the Cougars. 56 to 26, Centennial outscores Blaine 35 to six in the fourth quarter, 38 to we'll, six we'll in the second half. We can always get better and we just improved every time, every single play we got better and we relied on our teammates and we played as a team and one family. That's what got us through it. We're coming together like uh, as a team really well. We're getting better every day, we're working hard at practice and uh, it's paying off. Uh, tonight's game was great. Uh, you know, defense started off a little bit slow, but you know, the offense gave us something to play for tonight and we, we backed it up. Taking another look at it, 56 to 26 as Centennial's rushing attack. Just their offense overall is balanced. 272 yards on the ground. At Quinto, three touchdowns. Saw Levi Falk, two big catches, but Ryan Meany, really the star of the game in my opinion, forcing Blaine to respect the passing attack for the Bengals. You see Bogey there, nine catches, a buck 95 and a touchdown. Joey Blommer also with triple digit reception yardage, 111 yards on eight receptions and the touchdown. So the Cougars now in first place in the Northwest Suburban Conference North Standings. They are a half game up on the Elk River. Elks who surprisingly lost to Anoka last week. And that's what makes tonight's game against Armstrong so important for the Cougars. You see them up by one in the win column, five and two overall, Elk River in second, Champlin and Blaine, Anoka, Andover, and Coon Rapids round out the Northwest Suburban Conference North Division standings. So Centennial wins tonight. They win this division and get another home game as you see Ryan Meany out getting warmed up at midfield. He will be relied on heavily tonight to get this Centennial offense continuing to roll as they have, Kenton. This will be the last opportunity for a conference championship as the football schedules change to district schedules yep. as you'll be facing all of your district opponents, which you'll be facing in your uh, playoffs. So the Northwest Suburban Conference they added some teams, split it up into two divisions, and uh, I guess they have an opportunity to win their side of it. And Osseo on the other side has a chance as well, as Spring Lake Park had lost to Osseo earlier in the year. As their conference lost, they took to Andover, a familiar section opponent over the last two years, uh, now in their conference for at least one season. So Panthers traveling to Andover to take on the Huskies. In the first quarter, the Huskies on the drive. Tyler Golds getting the carry. Busts up through the middle. Nice spin break and a tackle. He takes it all the way inside the five yard line and he would set up a score. Jacob Geyer in from one yard out. Andover leads seven to nothing. Panthers end up turning the ball over. Andover, the fumble recovery on the 22 of Spring Lake Park, but they, instead of scoring, would turn it right back over. Pick up the first down, but then stripped. Antonio Zapata picks it up off the ground. His knees were down, but they don't blow the whistle. Run, big fella. Zapata down the sideline, 50 plus yards on the fumble recovery. And it sets them up for a score. Zach Ogile, speaking of big fella, going up for Aaron Murphy. Get on up. That's what he does. Aaron Zip Murphy, 14 yard touchdown. That's a play of the week nominee. Sprint Lake Park. Josh Bauer almost lost the handle on it, but a three yard touchdown score, 14-7 Panthers with the lead. And then another fumble, Panthers get it right back. And they capitalize, this time it is Zapata on offense, punching it in from four yards out, 21 to seven Panthers. Andover having their issues, yet another turnover. Josh Bauer, the interception, takes it all the way across the field. 
He does a lot of dancing. And then this one ends up. Quarterback keeps it. Zach Ogile. Oh, no, he did it. 71 yard touchdown, Zach Ogile. Play of the week nominee. There's a lot of those. 28 to 7. You betcha. It's a big week. And then the defense coming up with not only a stop, but a turnover on the goal line. Panthers have it. Less than a foot from the stripe. Panthers ball. That's some defense right there going back the other way. Andover just turns it over again. Four turnovers for Andover. Josh Bauer is second interception, and guess what? He's got blockers. Look at all those royal blue jerseys. It was an 85-yard interception return, but they brought it back on a penalty back to the 30-yard line. Doesn't matter. They would score, and the Panthers win. 35-14, to 14, that last score by Derek Solway. On a four-yard run, the Panthers get 329 yards, 290 on the ground. Ogile, 39 passing and touchdown, 119. And Bauer, big day defensively as well as offensively, 72 yards and a touchdown. Jaleel Waugh filling in for uh, Isley Carrington, quite nicely, 80 yards and a score for him. And Sperley Park forcing all those turnovers. Aaron Murphy on the other side of the ball as well, 13 tackles. He also recovered a fumble along with Jacob Lavon as uh, Panthers looked very good in this one on both sides of the ball, exercising some demons from last year's uh, section final loss to the Andover Huskies as Osseo, after defeating Maple Grove on Friday night, they stand alone 4-0 at the top of the conference, but they have uh, both Osseo and Maple Grove have big games tonight as uh, Osseo 4-0 in conference, 5-2 overall, and Spring Lake Park 3-2 in conference, 5-2 overall. All right, so uh, Panthers uh, looking to close out the season, taking on Maple Grove tonight. So uh, Maple Grove has kind of been steamrolling their opponents up yeah. until Friday when there was a bit of a surprise. They were upset by Osseo, who is a very good team, as we saw uh, against Spring Lake Park. Yeah, really, those top teams in both divisions have been going at each other for the most part, especially late in the season, making things interesting. And uh, Maple Grove and um, Tatina Grace both ranked in the top 10. Uh, and you'd think Aussie would be there as well as they just took down Maple Grove. So uh, very competitive um, conference for the final year of the conference. All right, time to go to some uh, tennis brackets as we, we went through the sections with the team this past week. And uh, Centennial ended up losing to Champlain Park. And uh, Blaine defeated Rogers before losing to Coon Rapids 6-1. to one. And Moundsview once again is your Section 5 AA champion, Moundsview. Uh, tennis team is playing at state once again. They're one of the favorites in class 2A. Edina, the one seed. And then they're taking on Mounds View. Mata Midai taking on Rochester Mayo. Prior Lake taking on Princeton. Minnetonka taking on St. Cloud Tech. All tennis happening in the baseline club on the 21st and 22nd. So next week is when you'll be wanting to watch your state tennis on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. In five double doubles. The uh, dynamic duo, we've seen them twice this year, Thunberg and Kelly, just steamrolling the competition up until losing to Hanola and Rain Coon Rapids team 2-0. Uh, but guess what? The top two advanced to state, so congratulations to Thunberg and Kelly. They won four matches before losing one. They advanced to the state tournament uh, next week as well to take on the uh, doubles teams in Class 2A at state. All right, we're going to go to break. Before we do that, it's trivia question time, Megan. It is trivia question time, and now we're focusing on soccer. And the question is, who is the all-time leader in shoutouts for Centennial Girls Soccer? It's not you? It might be me. <laughs> it might okay. be. You never you know. You never know. <laughs> she was the do-it-all uh, player at Centennial, so. It's true. You Many don't moons know. ago. I'll give you a hint. I knew this person personally. I don't know if that helps. But, uh, <laughs> it doesn't help at all. <laughs> 763-231-2809, or you can email us at sportsden at North Metro TV. We are live here at Centennial High School. We've got more sports in on the other side of this break, so do not go away. We'll be right back with more sports in and some football. Who don't you know? Known for its vineyards and hilltop villages, Umbria is also known for its delicious tasting pizza. Made traditionally from the finest ingredients, Umbria Pizzeria will make you taste the difference, smell the love, and transport you 
to Italy. La cena è pronta. Dinner's ready. You might even begin to feel like an Italian. Delicioso. <laughs> Umbria Pizzeria, turning taste into memories. Slapper every time. We are back at Centennial High School. <laughs> Sports Den and then football. It's a super Wednesday today and uh, last night we had some uh, super soccer as the sections for soccer. Uh, we had playoffs on Thursday, Saturday and wrapped up with the finals on uh, Tuesday. We had three teams in section finals. So it was a pretty uh, pretty busy day, but we'll start with uh, another Blaine Centennial matchup, Bishop. Yeah, Blaine Centennial in the section soccer yeah. semifinals. Let's take another look at it. Aaron was out there shooting this one on Saturday, and it was a great matchup. As you will see, Jonas Grieb, the big forward there for Centennial. He'll be a factor later in the next highlight, but here come the Cougars. Brendan Henderson gets taken down. This is in the first half, around the 31 minute mark. He has the penalty kick, completely fools the goaltender. The goaltender guessed right. Henderson went to his left, and the, of course, uh, way, way too exuberant soccer celebration ensued. <laughs> Blaine, however, would keep things going. A muffed play, and the Bengals finish it off. Ryan Anderson gets the goal at the 39 minute mark. One to one at that point. No scoring in the second half or the overtimes, but you see a lot of chances. Anders Severson was very busy, the goalkeeper for Centennial. And then Jonas Grieb with the chance here. He can't get to it as Blaine's defense doing a good job of helping out their goaltender. But Blaine, penalty kick time. Tyler Johnson would score. But then for Centennial, it was Kale Gieske. Then for Blaine, missing it, Nate Jacobson as Severson doing a very good job in goal. Edwin Omido can't get that one off of the foot of the Cougar player. And then Severson with another big save off the foot of Brett Huber. Here's Yang for Centennial, just unable to sneak it in the post. And then Keith Huber for Blaine, puts it in past a diving Severson. Brandon Henderson now with it. He just makes it look so easy. And then Blaine, Jordy Hagen with the goal. and. Centennial thought this would win the game, but the referee said that Severson went out of his, broke too quickly out of his set. So Blaine's Hagen would have another chance. He buries it. So we keep going. Jesse Roaring to win the match for Centennial. As you see him celebrate there with his teammates, Jesse Roaring is able to send Centennial to the section seven double A finals. Got a chance to catch up with some victorious Cougars after the match. Uh, for the kick, I was just thinking, I've done this a million times, we practiced them all week. We knew that or I was going in confident. Anders made two big saves, and uh, I was a little worried after he missed it, but I was confident. I knew that I, uh, I knew which way the goalie was going, I felt like, and I just had to put it somewhere where he couldn't reach it. And best feeling afterwards, I've never made a PK that big in my life, so it was a great feeling. We've been practicing the PKs all through practices last week, and we just really got it down. And then just the whole season led up to this great success, and that's why I think that brought us this win. Well, we played Duluth East earlier this year and ended up with a tie. I thought we all possessed them and played much better, and it was just one of those days that happens, but it'll be good having a section final at our place, being able to play in front of our community and playing in front of all our friends. I think it'll be uh, really good for us. Congratulations to the Cougars on that win. You heard Brandon Henderson talk about playing in front of the home fans. Let's get into that highlight now as the Cougars hosted the section final game. They hosted from up north the Duluth East Greyhounds, a match that proved to be very exciting. It was a beautiful day for some soccer. The first of a double dip last night actually here at Cougar Stadium at Centennial High School. The Cougars trying to ride that momentum of that overtime penalty kick goal and the momentum would start early. Broken play there, Jonas Grieb gets to the loose ball and sends it just inside the post. Another look at it. Goalkeeper Hugh Van Scoy can't get to it for the Greyhounds and it's one to nothing at Centennial. But after a handball in the box, Cullen Haita Pelto converts on the penalty kick, makes it one to one. He's jacked up along with Darby Henderson, his teammate there. So Duluth East, new life. And then a broken play here, a free kick from about 35 yards out, goes off of the head of Chris Luca, the midfielder, right there. Gets the goal, gives Duluth East the lead. He's excited, two to one at that point. Chris Luca 
with the goal to put the Luke East up top. That would be the game winner. The Eagles, uh, the Greyhounds rather, one of the craziest celebrations I've ever seen, hoist the Section 7 AA championship. They'll head to the state tournament at Husky Stadium. A very impressive season for the Centennial Cougars. As you see the section bracket there, Centennial just falling by a hair to Duluth East, two to one, as the two seed and the four seed represent in the section final. And it is the four seeded Greyhounds winning after they had defeated top seed in Andover. So uh, yeah. Duluth East, an impressive run through that section tournament. I bet they had an exciting uh, bus ride back up to Duluth. Here's section five double A. That'd be a fun bus ride as Maple Grove took down Mount Zoo. Maple Grove, the one seed, wins three to nothing. So they will head to the state tournament. You see Spring Lake Park there, the four seed, lost in the first round to the third seeded Osseo Orioles. So Maple Grove heading out there from section five double A. And it is the Duluth East Greyhounds heading there from section seven double A. Boys soccer action here at Centennial High School the past couple days. Yes, and in seven double A girls soccer, it was the Blaine Bengals drawing the number one seed. So they hosted all of their playoff games in the semifinal match on Saturday. Uh, uh, Blaine had a 4-1 lead at the half, thanks to goals from Montian Borgia and Schneider. And then Sydney Seim adds two goals in the second half. Schneider had two goals of her own. Blaine extends the lead to 6-1, to one, and they would hang on to win. Six to one, the final score. Bengals advance to the section championship. We caught up with a few of those victorious Bengals. Good teams can keep up the lead, but great teams like to make it greater. And we know that from two years ago that we were down to zero at half. We could come back winning 4-2, so we know that anyone can do it. Well, our coaches just keep us focused on everything. Every little touch counts. Practice really hard and just get focused. Well, it's going to be awesome. I mean, it's we've got like the last couple of games, we had a bunch of fans out there. I mean, it's just like nice to see all the support and we know the field. We know um, all the little divots in it and how we can use it to our advantage. And it's just nice to be at a familiar field and have familiar faces cheering you on and everything. And last night, the Section 5 AA Final, number three seed Moundsview took on the number one seed Centennial for all the marbles as they played for the championship trophy. First half, Moundsview seems to be the aggressor with many shots at the net, keeping Centennial on their heels. But in this corner kick, we see the Cougars' Allie Schock isn't afraid to use her head as she blocks the goal attempt and bring on the star swipe and replays. This is a Play of the Week nominee. First half remains scoreless, but in the second half, a corner kick by Patrick Gifford gives Schock yet another chance to use her head, and this time she scores for Centennial. As we take another look at it, this is the second Play of the Week nominee from this game. So many nominees. <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> the Cougars take the lead 1-0 over Moundsview, but it doesn't end there for the Cougars. Later on, off an out-of-bounds pass coming up from Moundsview after we see this celebration. Uh, the wrestling for the ball, but Centennial comes away with it, and it's passed all the way up the field to Cap Pollock, who takes it past any and every defender. She goes all the way and gets past the goalie, and she'll score for the Cougars. The Cougars take the lead 2-0, to zero, and they'll continue to hold Moundsview scoreless. Yeah. Centennial goes on to win the Section 5 AA Finals. Big celebration by, at the end of the game for both the team, as it looks like the goalie takes down Pollock, <laughs> and the crowd has a big celebration as they rush the field. After the medal and trophy ceremony, we caught up with a couple Cougar players to talk about the big win. My position the first half was definitely a little more tense, but we have a really solid back line, which I think helped push our, the rest of our team through it and gave our, our team some confidence in the second half to really pull through and then dominate most of that, I feel like. At halftime, Ginger would just like us, our coach would like us to just play as a team. We knew we could do it if we just played as a team and communicated and just didn't freak out and settled down and stuff, and that's exactly what we did, and that gave us the outcome that we were looking for. Uh, I've been practicing those all season. I knew I had to get it in far post. Katri Gifford, I knew she'd hit it right to me. I just put it in. To our state tournament. The 5AA section bracket. 
Centennial beat Spring Lake Park to go into the championship against Moundsview, and they took the tournament. Taking a look at the girls' soccer section 7 AA bracket, it was the Bengals falling to Anoka, the three-seeded Tornadoes upsetting the Bengals one to nothing after Blaine had, as you saw, beat Andover in the semis six to one. St. Francis fell to Anoka. That allowed Anoka from the three-seed all the way to the state tournament, upsetting two in a row. And by the way, Kenton, Morgan Wurz with the shutout for Centennial, her 13th shutout of the season. That's a lot, and that is a school record. So congratulations to Morgan Wurz. She finally passed up Kirsten Lulja, who set the record uh, four years ago, I believe, uh, the goalie prior to Morgan Wurz. So congratulations to her. And uh, that trivia question is related to those shutouts. So. <laughs> Did you just <laughs> answer the trivia question nope, for people? I sure didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, so that Anoka Blaine game, uh, we didn't get the, the game quick enough to get highlights of it. QC TV has televised it. We will get that on uh, QC, on, excuse me, on on our air and potentially have highlights for you next week. But we will air that game here on North Metro TV. Volleyball, the season's, uh, the regular season wrapped up last night. Section seedings will be around the corner as section play starts next Tuesday. In the Northwest Suburban Conference, Champlain Park defeated Blaine last night to seal the deal as the uh, Champlain Park Rebels win it 12 and one in conference, 19 and four overall, 19 and five. This is a stacked conference as the Bengals fall to 11 and two, 14 and seven overall to Tino Grace. Right with them there, 11 and two. Osseo, 10 and two. Maple Grove, 10 and three. Centennial, seven and seven. Spring Lake Park, six and seven. As uh, all of our teams with winning records overall. So congratulations to our volleyball teams. And uh, they will all see each other in section 53A starting next Tuesday. So we'll look forward to that. All right, our North Metro TV games. You know what? It's playoff time. Yep. We have tonight, obviously. Tonight, football Armstrong at Centennial will be happening a half an hour from right now. And then we'll have uh, volleyball and state soccer and section football all next week and beyond. So the best of luck to all of our teams as uh, time to honor our athletes of the week. Now, Tyler Iquinto on Friday night against Blaine. We saw him run for over 140 yards, and I think he scored three total touchdowns. Four total Four, touchdowns. Three rushing three and rushing, one kick one return. Kick return. Yep. 115 yards on the kick returns for him. So congratulations to uh, Tyler Iquinto. And then... We've got some more. Lots of Play of the Week nominees, lots of Athletes of the Week. Allie Schock, Centennial Girls Soccer. Not only did she have a goal, she also had an assist on the other goal and then stopped the other team from scoring with her head. She did it all, Allie Schock. And then we want to mention uh, within this past week, we have two more uh, cross-country runners from our teams. As for Centennial, it was Reed Kurak winning the Northwest Suburban Conference Individual Champion. And then for Blaine, the eighth grader, Sarah Olson, uh, she goes to school at Northdale Middle School, but she runs for Blaine. And uh, so she won the girls' side of the North uh, West Suburban Conference Championship in the 4,000 meters. Congratulations to our cross-country nice. runners as well. Time now for our play of the week. What's it going to be? Ah, uh, there's so many options. What did we choose? <laughs> I can't uh, wait to I, find I out. I have no idea. <laughs> no, Matt Waldron, I don't know. It's up to you. Here's the play of the week. Play of the week. Here it is. Oh, they went with Zach Gogile on the keeper, breaking tackles. And running 71 yards for the touchdown. <laughs> that is your play of the week. All right, check our website, northmetrotv.com, for schedules and uh, all that jazz. You can watch all of our videos of YouTube, our uh, highlights, and Coach Camden's on YouTube. Football coming up next. Go support your teams. Go Bengals. Go Cougars. Go Panthers. <laughs>